Mike Review. So today we are looking at this guy, the Sennheiser MD421-2. And if you do want to pick up this microphone, it'll set you back around $380. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the 2i2 second gen. My input gain is set at about 4 o'clock. Not going to do any post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. Everything comes in this plastic storage box. You will obviously get the microphone. You get the microphone clip. You get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. And you get some documentation. When it comes to the build quality, I have absolutely zero concerns about this thing. And that's partially because this is an industry standard microphone for toms. And if you are going to be miking up a drum kit, you sure as hell better think that it's going to be built really well. Now, one thing I was surprised by was the fact that this microphone has an all plastic body, but it does feel like a very sturdy build still. It also has an all metal grill, which is insanely sturdy. The back of the microphone does have the XLR port, but directly next to that, there is a five way high pass switch, which we will go through a little bit later in the testing. As far as the specs, this microphone does have a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 30 hertz to 17 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 54 decibels, and an impedance of 200 ohms. Okay, right now I am speaking into the 421 with the high pass filter set to off, which is when the dial is set to M. Now I am on the first high pass filter switch and this is how it sounds. Now I am on the middle high pass switch and this is how it sounds fourth high pass switch and this is how it sounds for spoken word and now we are on the very last high pass filter setting which is where the dial says s because this is the speech setting if i am not mistaken and this is how it sounds but i don't think it really sounds that flattering for speech hmm Okay, now I am spinning around the MD421 to the 90 degree angle to show you what the off axis coloration and rejection is. We will rotate around to the 180 degree section, show you what it sounds like from the rear. We will rotate again to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect with the high pass filter set to off. Still right on top of the microphone, but the high pass filter is set to the middle setting. And still right on top of the microphone, but now we are set to the S setting, which is the most extreme version of the high pass filter. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Of course, we do gotta test the plosives, so please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Calling all the nine-year-olds It's time to subscribe and say PewDiePie Okay, so this is definitely a very different and unique sounding dynamic microphone. In terms of pros, this microphone did do a very good job at background noise rejection. It also has a lot more detail than a lot of other dynamic microphones out there, if that's something that you're looking for. And it is also very versatile with that five-way high pass switch on the rear of the microphone, even if I don't think some of those settings are even very useful. And then in terms of cons, this microphone is just absolutely terrible when it comes to plosives. And the microphone clip that it comes with is actually pretty bad as well. It has this little button on the bottom that you push to release the microphone. And while I was setting up the mic, I accidentally pushed that and the microphone fell right off of the stand. So it's not a good microphone clip and it does a bad job with plosives. 
Now, as far as my overall thoughts of this mic, on the electric guitar, maybe I'm a little bit crazy, but I think it has a very subtle scooped sound to it. I think that's probably because when you close mic a guitar amp, you get that proximity effect, which boosts the low end. This mic has plenty of boost in the treble and air frequencies, and that gives it a little bit of a V shape. Now, although I am saying that, I did find that if you enable the high pass to the second or third switch, you can and offset that and get some really nice tones. Then on the acoustic guitar, I was surprised with how good this thing sounded. It had a very robust and full low end and plenty of clarity and detail up top, but I do think that the five kilohertz peak of this microphone made the accents of the acoustic a little bit harsh. Next, for singing, I actually really liked this microphone. I found that if you have the high pass filter off and you're three to five inches away from the mic, you can get a very smooth sound that has a full low end and a lot of detail and clarity up top without sounding brittle. And lastly, for spoken word, I know I sound like a broken record, but the mic has a lot of detail, especially compared to other dynamic microphones, and it has a really full and pleasing body to it. I do want to point out, though, that I think the higher boost to this microphone is on the verge of sounding overboosted and a little bit unnatural. So I think it's really important to stay fairly close to this microphone to kind of offset that big boost to the presence treble and air frequencies. And now, would I recommend this microphone? Of course I would. It's a classic microphone for a reason. Now on vocals, you can get some really nice tones out of it. It has that full body, but it also has that proximity effect that you can utilize to offset the high boost, and it will also offer you a lot more detail than other dynamic microphones out there. But again, I will point out, the plosives on this thing are absolutely atrocious. So if you are using this for vocals, you need to have a pop filter or you need to have very good microphone technique. And then for instruments, I think that's where this microphone really shines. On the instruments I tested it on, I was able to get some pretty good tones, but this mic really seems to be a bit more popular for both drums and bass. So if you're doing anything in a studio, this may be a great mic to have in your mic locker. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you found this video interesting or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a thumbs down. If you want more videos, don't subscribe to me. Go subscribe to PewDiePie and help him beat T-Series. See, I am doing my part as a nine-year-old. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, I'll throw a link in the description, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.